What's up everybody? So I've been getting some questions. A couple of people have texted me since I posted the video yesterday on this full body, full body detox that I mentioned created by herbalist Tahuti Ma'atra. And also questions just, you know, people have been like, okay, so this detox, you do it twice a year and it's almost three weeks, all raw foods. That just seems very extreme. And, um, you know, why? And I'll get a little bit more in depth um, on why I choose to do this detox. So I read this quote one time and it said, if religion is for people who are afraid of going to hell, then spirituality is for people who have already been there. And that resonated with me to the extreme. Um, I believe that race is a social construct, which is why I'm not planning on talking too much about race and racism in my videos because it doesn't really exist um, we've made it up for our own purposes you know because the machine kind of has to have some people down in order for it to continue to work um, but the thing is there's only you know so many millionaires and so many people that are wealthy and there's a lot of people who share your complexion who don't share your complexion all different races and nationalities who are going through the same thing on this earth as far as the struggles and all of that so um race the whole scheme of race is kind of a little bit of a, a lie but one thing that has been troubling to me is like a lot of times um when i come across you know people who share my quote unquote race and maybe I talk about something that I'm going through if I say you know I'm really my heart is really hurting right now or I'm not really in a good headspace right now whatever it is it's like well you know I went through Nam barefoot and got shot in the back 20 times it's like is this a trade of of stories you know it is like like are we not allowed to be in tune with our feelings are we not allowed to be um, sensitive or feel hurt is it always about just being strong and why are certain people allowed to feel vulnerable and certain people are allowed to you know um, express their 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 hurt and other people it's almost as if there's this misconception that um, we are able to endure anything like being melanated automatically makes you equipped to endure the most severe abuse and the, the worst um, situations and maybe it is true and I'll talk a little bit about my story when I say that I related to that quote because um, you know my story is I've been through more than the average person and so when people see me smiling and they see me happy-go-lucky they assume that uh, my life is just easy and that I've never been through adversity and the truth is I've been through a whole lot of adversity and you know I'll start from the beginning you know my mom and, and dad getting divorced um, and my mom being forced to work you know ton a lot of jobs to be able to support all four of us and having to rely on her brother who ended up not being trustworthy and was a violator was you know someone who um, would touch young girls inappropriately and I wasn't the only one that he did it to and you know growing up as one of the only african-american families in the neighborhood and really trying to find you know my way through that navigate through that and what that meant and just you know watching my mom really go through it as somebody who was just overworked and underpaid and you know really having a hard time and um culturally you know as much as i say i love my culture and i love my people but this is like what i'm doing is like culturally a no-no like you don't talk about your your problems 
culturally like you don't talk about family business it's a viol it's considered a violation if you have issues deal with it we all do like that's kind of the um the general way you know and i don't think it's just with african culture i think it's also african-american culture it's like you don't put your dirty laundry out in the street you have to always be intact and you have to always appear to be strong and you know you never want to put anything out there because people will be able to use it against you in the future and i just don't i don't see things that way i think that we are as dark as our secrets and i think that a lot of times the things that we um are dealing with as a society for example this opioid crisis um people are literally popping pills just to be able to feel good because we have this culture that says don't talk don't tell your story, don't tell your secrets. And people are dealing with some really heavy stuff and they don't feel comfortable enough to express themselves. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of people just have like this animosity, this bitterness, and it's like this weight that's on them, uh, especially women, you know, very can be very bitter and very scorned and um, black women in particular. And I hate to generalize because, you know, there's no such thing as all people are one way, but I think that society, you know, has put a lot of things on us. You know, for example, just having like a racist neighbor where you never have done anything to that person, but they just look at you and they won't even talk to you because they have um, issues of, of racism. And having to go through that day to day, a lot of times being in a corporate setting where you have to go through, um, you know, people just treating you unfairly and not really knowing how to deal with those feelings. So you're going to the bar after work and you're drinking your, your problems um, because you don't know how to express yourself. You can't express yourself because society says that that's considered weak or you're telling your business or all of these things. I don't believe in that. I believe that self-expression is our God-given right. And so I'm expressing myself. And um, when people ask me why I detox, yeah, I detox because there were a lot of things that happened in life that I could not really understand at the time. Um, I used to play lacrosse and, you know, I had this tremendous situation where I had to um, go to the hospital. I was on a captain's run one day before practice and I was having these excruciating pains in my left leg and come to find out, um, muscle tissue had died in my left leg and you know, I was in the hospital for a month. Um, I had to learn how to walk all over again. I went from a wheelchair to a walker, to crutches, to a cane. And then I had to be homeschooled. I had a catheter. Um, it was just really devastating. They didn't think that I was gonna be able to, um, well, for one, they thought that they were gonna have to amputate my leg. So just the fact that I was able to walk again was like a huge shock to everybody. And then for two, they were convinced, like, if you, you know, graduate on time, you're going to have to walk across stage with a cane. And I didn't. I was able to walk across stage with no cane. I'll show you guys my scars. Let's see this. Oh, kind of ashy. I just got out of the shower. But that's, that's one of my scars. That's one of three of my scars. And, um... I went to college and you know when I was in there's always lessons to be learned um, I think one of the lessons that I had to learn was vanity you have to really be okay with accepting yourself as you are and not be so vain and I think also um, it helps with attracting true love because if there's a man that comes at you and he's expecting you to have a perfect body and that's the only reason that he's with you, then that's really not the person that you want to be with. So these scars, you know, have really allowed me to weed out the people who would only be interested in me because of, you know, having a perfect body or anything like that and learning to love myself regardless of my physical imperfections has been quite a journey but at that time you know at 16 17 years old you haven't developed these life gems you haven't developed this this wisdom so i went to college with an extremely fractured 
self-esteem, like extremely fractured self-esteem. And the men that I attracted as a result were just, you know, really a reflection of that. They um, treated me poorly and, you know, made fun of me and um, told me I wasn't pretty because I wasn't light skinned and, you know, really just drove my self-esteem even lower. And I attracted, you know, a monster and ended up getting pregnant by this horrible nightmare of a man who um, held me hostage and threatened to take my life and um, would abuse me repeatedly. You know, I mean, punched me to the concrete where my head hit the concrete and there was blood everywhere, blood pouring down my shirt, um, kicked me in the stomach, kneeled me in the stomach while I was pregnant, um, told me if I talked about it that he would take my life, and then, you know, never supported his child the 11 years that he's been alive, never, not a dollar, not a dime, nothing. And so when people, you know, see me again and they see me smiling and things, like, they really don't know my history, they don't know my journey, they don't know the adversity that I've had to overcome, and I'm no victim. I mean, I'm, I can't be a victim. Like, life has turned around in the most tremendous way, and I've continued to rise throughout the adversity. Um, but one thing that I've become very firm on is what I will and will not tolerate. And there were people that came into my life that really were not about my rise, you know, were not about um, helping me to become the woman that I came here to become. They were there to take away from me. And at times I was like, you know, crying to God, like, God, why do I always attract these, you know, very like nefarious individuals? Like, why do I always attract people who um, aren't in it for the long run and want to like see me at a very low level? Like, why God, why do you keep sending these people my way? And I understood finally when I detoxed that these were lessons and these were tests that I was being sent. And really the ultimate test was, well, how much do you love yourself? Despite everything that you've been through and all the things that people have said about you and the way that they, you know, call you crazy and the way that they have tarnished and, and you know, try to deteriorate your character and all of the things that you've been through in these abusive relationships with men and these terribly abusive uh, relationships in almost every job where these management, you know, are, are stealing or they're just doing all of this like really nefarious activity like why do you keep attracting that so really it was time for me to look within and so when people ask me well what's up with the detox it's not just a matter of the raw foods and the herbs like that's a part of it of course but it's much deeper and what I'll show you guys let me show you what I've been doing um, yoga has helped tremendously people are like Oh, all she does is do yoga, blah, blah, blah. Do you know how therapeutic it's been to do yoga? Do you know that there's been times where I couldn't lift my head up at a child's pose because I couldn't stop thinking about my past and I just didn't want the class to see that I was in tears and just crying and crying and crying? Like, people don't know these things and they think, oh, yeah, I'm going to detox and it's all glamorous. Like, it's not easy, okay? You have, to, you have to deal with things in your life that you've hidden so deep just to be able to move on and move forward. You have to deal with that uncle that molested you. You have to deal with, you know, the the people that did you wrong. You have to deal with your best friend that betrayed you, who, you know, you were telling all your secrets to and it ended up, ended up, you know, telling the world or trying to set you up. You have to deal with all of the things that have happened to you in your life to say, regardless, I'm going to do what's best for me. Like you have to really, really dive deep. So when people wanna know about this detox, I'm gonna let you know it's nothing glamorous and it's really not all that fun. There's gonna be nights that you're gonna be crying yourself to sleep, trying to figure out why it was that you were the person that got abused and where were people who were supposed to have your back. And all of these things, all of these situations of you know, poverty and, and scarcity, scarce mentality, you're gonna have to deal with these things and you're gonna have to really dive deep. But one thing that's helped tremendously, again, is, you know, my commitment to fitness has been 
tremendously helpful. And then this, this is a journal that, and I've told you guys I've been detoxing for a while, but this is the first time that I actually decided to do this. This is a journal and I've literally, literally written a letter to every single person that I needed to forgive. Um, from my parents to my first boyfriend, my first heartbreak, to my last boyfriend who cheated, every single person that I needed to forgive, that I was holding on to this animosity and this resentment. And then lastly, you know, the letter that I'm going to be writing is to myself. The circumstances that I put myself in, the abuse that I've had on myself. Um, and I'm going to also recommend some books. Um, some of these books are really good for women. Um, there is a sister who is, uh, she goes by the name of Queen Afua, and she write, writes books about um, the wounded womb. And, you know, I, I am proud to say I've been pregnant one time and I have one child to show for it, but I know that there's all types of circumstances that women go through where they have infertility issues um, and, you know, they've had to endure abortions. There's all types of things that women go through they don't talk about and they carry these things with them. And this book really lays it out on how to begin to heal and all of the steps that you need to take to heal. And again, yoga is a huge part of it. Journaling is a huge part of it. A solitude is a huge part of it. I have no issue with solitude. I have no issue with being alone because if at one point, if you are the only person that can be your own friend and love yourself the, way, the real way that you really need to be loved, don't be around people who aren't going to treat you right just to be around people. Don't have an issue with being alone. It's not that serious. Okay, you know, you have to learn to enjoy your own company. You have to learn yourself. You have to, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I just hope that I don't get to a point where I don't want to be around people at all because I've been really enjoying the self-discovery process. So if you're ready to embark on this journey, I'm going to give you the information. Um, the website is Tahuti Ma'atara. That is D-J-H-E-T-U-Y-M-A-A-T. R-A, you can Google it, Tahuti Ma'atara Herbs, and um, it's the full body detox. It's going to cost you, I think that he's having a sale, so it's going to cost you around $90 or $95 to get it. Um, you may want to go ahead while you're waiting for the package to be shipped to you. Go ahead, get your groceries, get your alkaline water, get your raw foods. And if you're really prepared to do this deep introspection and really... Um, heal yourself, I would strongly recommend. I know that there's plenty of detoxes out there, but this is the one that has worked for me the most. So um, if you're really ready, like I said, it's not glamorous. It's really nothing pretty that you have to do when you're doing this deep soul searching, but what you come out with is so much more than what you came in with. So if you got any questions, please don't hesitate to text me, email me, let me know. Um, you can find me at Noir, the hip hop blogger at gmail.com. And if you want to know more about this detox and more about my story and my personal journey, um, please let me know. A big shout out also to Ralph Smart. Let me, let me show people my sweatshirt. You might see me around town with a sweatshirt. Let me see if it can focus in. Uh-oh. See the sweatshirt? It says, feels so good. Feels so good to be alive. Infinite Waters Ralph Smart. I call him one of my virtual senseis because he's just amazing. And I would strongly suggest if you're going through things, even if you're not, if you're ready to embark on a journey, if you know, you're ready to um, dive a little bit deeper into who you are and really learn yourself, um, I'd strongly recommend that you subscribe to his channel. And he talks about his journey also a lot of times. You know, sometimes when you're called to this 
a journey of self-discovery, it's not something that you just facilitate on your own. Sometimes it's, you know, people having a breakdown and, you know, realizing that they no longer want to be a part of um, this system that is driving them nuts, literally. These, you know, environments that aren't good for their well-being. But I'll let him tell his story, but I would strongly recommend um, that you, you know, subscribe to his channel. He's amazing. And again, you know, if you want to do this detox, it's Tahuti Ma'atara Herbs. And uh, I thank you all for listening. And I'm going to be back with more, more recipes, um, more book recommendations. And yeah, peace. Until next time.